the thing that attracted us to this business, a lot of us, is the sexiness, the freedom of schedule. If we do not have some sort of structure to our days, it can really prove to be detrimental to your business. Hey friends, I'm Rosemary Lewis, your homegirl, and I'm so excited that you are here. I do not care what it looks like on Instagram or HGTV. This whole being a realtor thing is not for the faint at heart. In 2017, I quit my job as a teacher to follow my real estate dreams and quickly found myself overwhelmed and struggling. Fast forward to today, not only have I been recognized as one of the leaders in our industry, I have actually grown a business that I absolutely love. I don't care if you're a brand new agent trying to figure out how to get started or a veteran feeling overwhelmed and just stuck. I was just like you and I totally get it. Many times I wish there was someone that I could just talk to about all the challenges I was facing. And that is why I created this space just for you. Like best friends do, I'm giving you all the tea related to navigating and thriving in these real estate streets. If I can do it, guess what? That's proof that you can too. Everything's better with friends, so let's succeed together. Welcome to the Real Estate Bestie Podcast. Well, hello there, besties. Welcome back to the Real Estate Bestie Podcast. Look, we back like we never left, okay? And on this podcast, we are going to talk about setting ourselves up with a schedule for success. And I cannot think of a better time to actually have this conversation right now. Like when the school year is starting, you know, it feels like summer is winding down. And to me, maybe it's because of my school teacher background, this time of year always feels even more so of a new beginning for me than January 1st, because again, I was in school my whole life and then I taught for 14 years. So it was always just that excitement around the beginning of the school year. And I was thinking to myself, just as I am like literally today, I am going to take my almost 13 year old who's taller than me, by the way, I'm going to take Cameron to school tonight. He's in middle school. So we're going to do like the middle school walk where we walk his new schedule. His mama has not bought one school supplies. So, you know, I'm just really looking at over the next couple of days, I'm going to get his school supplies. I'm going to look at, you know, his bus schedule, figuring out, you know, what changes are going to happen to his schedule where I have to adapt my business to. And I was thinking, hmm, if I am making these preparations and just really looking at how I am will transition from, you know, a little bit more fluidity in the summer to a little bit more structure during the school year, then hmm, maybe the besties would love a refresher. And that's something that we can talk through together. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to talk about just, you know, what it looks like to plan and have a schedule for success. And I'm hoping, oh, actually not even hoping, I know this will be helpful. So this is probably a podcast that you may listen to more than once. Definitely share it with your real life real estate bestie. And it might not be a bad idea to just have a notepad out to take some notes and to really just, you know, actually, like I want you to take what we're talking here and actually apply it to your schedule and your business. And I promise you will definitely see, you'll see a difference, but you will feel a difference if more than anything. So let me just back up a little bit and tell you, friend, one of the best things that you can do in business and in life really is like get a hold of your time and how you are spending time. And what I have learned in my tenure as a real estate agent and even before that is like when I have some type of rhythm, when I set up some type of framework, an ideal schedule, you know, it just helps with providing structure. And I get it. You know, you got into real estate agent for vibe or being a real estate agent for the vibes. You don't want to be, you know, the slave to nobody's clock and da, 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 da. But let me tell you something. The thing that attracted us to this business, a lot of us is the sexiness, the freedom of schedule. If we do not have some sort of structure to our days, it can really prove to be detrimental to your business. So I am always going to be encouraging you 
to, you know, have some sort of time block, not even some sort. I'm going to encourage you to have a time block. I actually have a course about time blocking that you will be able to download today if you want to. But even if you decide to download that course, it's a quick go through to really talk through the art of time blocking. This is again, a great time to do that. But this podcast, like even if you don't, if you want to take that next step, wonderful. But if you just want to like listen and start with what I give you today, that is perfectly fine. But that course, rosemarylewis.com forward slash time, you can get the full time blocking course. But let's just talk about the semantics of just different things that I'm going to to encourage you to have part of your schedule. So first things first, friend, before we talk about what will happen on a day-to-day basis in your real estate business, and I know that, you know, some of my besties are full-time, you may be dual career. So, you know, there are a few moving pieces, but then like you kind of got to consider for those of you who have families or children or just other responsibilities where they have, you know, just very, very specific time things that we need to consider in our schedule take some time to just kind of just take assessment of what your responsibilities are. So when I think about myself and I think about my responsibilities, you know, I got the bus schedule this year. I got the time that my son Cameron has to be on the bus. And because of what I typically need and for myself in terms of quiet time in the morning and preparing for my day and my evening, it's really important that first of all, I figure out and I, and I properly budget for the time that he needs. Okay. Now, like I told you before, Cam is 13. So the way that I'm able to go about his schedule now and my schedule based on his, it looks a little bit different. So don't take everything that I'm saying, like as, as law, because I'll give you a great example. Like right now, he does not need me as much in the morning. Now I do have to have flexibility for him. And I need to, you know, when I do my time block, I block off time with his name so that I'm not trying to cross, you know, do two activities at once. But that amount of time is a lot less. Like I only need to do 25 to 30 minutes for him now. Whereas when he was younger, right? When I was walking him to school, when the breakfast situation looked different, when the wake up situation looked different, I needed to budget more time. So I really want you to think about like, not only what time do you have to maybe get your kiddo out the door or get breakfast on the table, but also like, you know, your kid, like, you know, like don't get frustrated with what y'all be naming y'all kids, like Chloe and Layla and Simone and Nivea. I'm going all girl names and little DJ and CJ and BJ. Don't be mad at them, right? When you budget 30 minutes, knowing good and gone well you needed to budget an hour in the morning okay so I want you to look and see like what time do they have to be in their respective places what your responsibility is to that and just start thinking through a loose schedule right a loose schedule of okay if if he needs to be out the door by this time that means I need to be up by this time and I need to do this by that time so let me just tell you about mine so Cameron He catches the bus. I know I'm not about to give y'all all all the time. Well, I don't care if I give you times. He catches the bus somewhere in the seven o'clock hour. Okay. So because of that, when I really look at my schedule, what this is what I have learned about me is that I am at my best for my family, for my business, for my life. When I have time in the morning, before the world needs me okay there was once upon a time right where I would wake up and like go straight to work and this was even before my real estate work but like now like I need to I need I need to roll into the morning I need time to spend with Jesus every single day I need time to sit in silence I need time to do a little housework like I'm really good one of my leverage like mommy activities is that For the most part, I wash a load of clothes like every day to at least every other day. It doesn't pile up on me. And that's when I put the clothes in a washing machine. Like in the morning, I put the clothes in a washing machine as soon as I wake up and then I move them to the dryer like, you know, after Cam wakes up, right? So figure out how much time you need in the morning and like backwards roll that. So like, let's just say I need to have Cameron up at seven o'clock 
if I need somewhere between 60 to 90 minutes for myself, then that means that your girl is getting up between 5.30 and 6. Okay, you see what I did there? And I know somebody might be like, 5.30 and 6? Listen, you got to go after it, right? And, and I'm not saying that you have to absolutely be up at a certain amount of time because this looks different for everyone. But what I've learned about myself is that having a solid way that I both start and end my day, it really is going to dictate. It's like the bookend that holds everything up straight in the middle. So as a result, like I need to make sure that I'm up by about 530, which means I need to go and go to bed the night before. So that's a whole nother podcast that we probably will revisit. But if you want to go on over to scroll all the way back to podcast number eight, where I talk about what's better than a morning routine, trust me, it is worth the listen. Okay, so for me, And for you, I'm going to suggest that you have some sort of time in the morning where you are centering yourself, where you are quiet, where you are reading the word, where you are praying, where you're meditating, where you're visualizing, like whatever that looks like for you to center yourself in the morning. Again, for me, it's 60 to 90 minutes for you. You might be like, hey, I'm good with 40. I'm good with 30. Whatever that looks like, like let's have some time in your work, in your in your daily schedule where you are pouring into you so that you're not pouring from an empty cup. And as a pivot to this, I've said it before, I'm going going to say it again, okay? The issue here though is do not wake up with that phone in your hand. Before you look up all of the time that you could have been giving to yourself, you might be living somebody else's life on the social media or, you know, doing something with a deal or whatever, like there should be like some straight up time for you, okay? Then Whatever it looks like for you to, you know, get your people off, however that is for me, I have the quiet time first and then I get the people off and then I work out. Okay. Now I work out at home. I used to go to a gym and now they're building a lifetime fitness not too far from my house. So because of the commute, I may consider joining when they open it. But I just found figured out for me and I'm such an extrovert. So this is like at first I didn't think that this would work for me. But what I learned about myself and again, you are continually evolving. Like for the longest I would get up and I would go straight to a workout class And that workout class was great. I loved it. It was Camp Gladiator. So much fun, so much community. But for time purposes, like the time commuting back and forth, and I just found out, especially after my mom died, again, me having more time to myself, not to isolate, but to just refuel on my own, you know, I just evolved. So I work out at home. Now, if you choose to go to a gym and work out, or, and I'm not saying that you have to work out at home, but if it's a walk, if it's crunches, if it's yoga, if it's, you know, a group fitness, if it's meeting a friend for a walk, I think that there is definitely something about getting, because what we want to do is take care of ourselves. Part of taking care of your business, I think, is taking care of yourself and take care of your body, taking care of your mind. So starting off your day, showing yourself some love mentally, showing yourself some love physically, I think it's huge. I'm not going to say you got to have a 90, 100, whatever, like being active looks like for you. Let's find space to be active. And my suggestion is getting it done in the morning um, before there are distractions and things that are in your way. Okay. So after I work out in the morning, then that's when I'm getting ready for the day. And I will give myself, now let me tell you one thing that I start doing because I do like to get my phone out of my hand and I like to get all the way through my workout without being on any sort of social media. But what like I have given myself sometimes as like as a little prize for like following and actually honoring those commitments to myself is I will do a hike like I will end my workout with a hike. I have a Peloton tread and y'all them them hiking classes like low key they hit harder. They hit way harder than the running classes. But I will let myself like scroll reels only when I'm hiking and listen let me tell you something that hike go back so fast but it's a killer workout but again in the morning I cannot emphasize this enough like and literally I've got to teeter myself okay if you're gonna scroll the reels as soon as that class over you put that phone up and you get dressed because social media is a slippery slope like you'll look up and you just spend all of your morning routine on the social media but sometimes I will give myself a reel and sometimes I won't sometimes I'm listening to a podcast or I'm listening to some motivation like some sort of like a lot of times in the morning when I'm working out 
instead of listening just to music, sometimes I listen to worship music, but a lot of, lot of times I'm listening to some sort of mindset motivation. Like right now I'm on a Myron Golden kick. So I know if anybody know Myron Golden, tell him he is my uncle. I do a lot of like just different podcasts, Jennifer Allwood podcasts, just different things that will either grow me spiritually or mindset wise or business. So after the workout, obviously you're going to shower, you're going to smell good, you're going to do all that. Now it's time to get ready for the day. I am going to encourage you a million percent. I don't care if you are working from home to get dressed, okay? Get dressed, like put, and I'm not saying you got to get super duper, you know, fancy and fine, but it's something about, you know, just that mental state of like taking a shower. Cause y'all know, y'all, I know you bestie. I know. Cause I'm just like you, like if I don't make myself do it, I will sit up and I will have my workout clothes and then I'll, I'll start scrolling social media. And before I know it, it's time for me to start leading it. And oops, I don't have time to take a shower. Now I got to sit here funky. No. I am going to get dressed, get in the shower, put on something, you know, and I'm gonna tell you in a second why I like to get dressed, but actually get dressed and then you get prepared for your work day. Now, some of you all may go into the office, you know, I, it is my preference to go into the office most days, or even if you're working from home, get dressed immediately. Like my first few calls, if I'm not having a team meeting or something, I like to send five video messages and it, it means it, it hit a little better when you dress and just the people in my sphere just the people in my database like it may be somebody that I saw did something on social media and instead of commenting on the post if they're really friends with me or I'll slide in their dms and I'm going to send them a video message acknowledging whatever that I saw and this is just another way to stay top of mind so definitely have that in your daily schedule okay now here's a part most people want to skip. After that, this is time for your lead generation activity. So your lead generation activity, there should be a block of time in your schedule. I am of the strong belief, right? Like some people, some culture is going to tell you, get on the phone for four hours, get on the phone for five hours. But boo, I know you struggle to make six phone calls. So telling you to, you know, hammer it down. Like some people have that gift. They can cold call. That's my son. He can cold call till he's blue in the face. It does not bother him. But I know that majority of people would rather throw up in their own mouth in order to do that. But the reality in this business is that every single real estate deal that you see, every closing, every celebration, every commission, every past client, they all started with a conversation. And if we are not having conversations, then we can't convert. You can't convert what you don't converse. Who? Let, let, hold on. Let me write that down. You cannot convert what you don't converse. And there needs to be dedicated time in our schedules every single day where we are actively having real estate conversations and doing active lead generation activities. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do right? But I'm gonna give you some ideas. So that may be, you know, are you calling expired listings? Are you calling for sale by owners? Are you calling? Do you have a system in how you are calling and reaching out to your database? Are you following up with your past leads, right? What does it look like to to touch in and connect with your sphere of influence, right? To build those long-term referral businesses. But whatever that looks like every single day, there should be time on your schedule where you are dedicated and you are going to protect those lead generation hours profusely. You are going to protect that, okay? And the way that I, you know, teach my coaching students is like, you know, think about working out. Who do you think is going to be in better shape? The person who runs one mile a day or the person who tries to do a marathon every three years, like they just try to go out there and run it. Obviously the person who has the continual reps. So I would rather see on a schedule, you know, a consistent hour and a consistent two hours of 
active lead generation activities, which is, if you want to know if it's active or not, is it leading to a conversation? Am I having conversations during this time? If this time is not me actively speaking, not texting, I'm going to say it again to the people in the back, not texting, but if I'm not actually speaking to people, then I really need to rethink the activity. And this is going to be the time that I block off for that active lead generation activity, okay? So let's just, let's back up. Let's talk about what we did all morning, okay? So we woke up, we had our quiet time. This needs to be in your schedule. You're gonna have some sort of movement workout. You got these kids off to school, so you've served your family well, whoever you need to. Then we have put on some clothes, okay? We brushed our teeth, we feel good about ourselves. And now we have, participated in a daily lead generation activity okay then i'm gonna set up some time for some quick admin make sure that when you are doing these legions when you are having these conversations they may need to be a little bit of database cleanup you know you may need to update some notes you may need to set some follow-ups in your crm this admin activity as well could also include like do you need to check email do you need to check in on current deals and things that are happening right So giving yourself some time before lunch where you are touching base with all the things. And I know that there's somebody thinking like, okay, wait, Rosemary, it sounds like you're saying that you're not checking in on your deals until like late to mid morning. How is that? That is a million percent what I'm saying, right? Because I need to eat and hunt in the morning, right? We get the hard stuff out of the way. If you spend all of your like your prime time checking on the business that you already have, guess what? You y'all, your days are numbered with that client anyway, at least until they purchase again in three to five years, because once they close, you're gonna be unemployed. You have to go out and hunt for new things. But the thing that can help you, and I will link the episode, I don't have the episode number right here, is creating leverage in your business, right? So one of the best hires, one of the first hires that you wanna make in your real estate business, in my opinion, is having a transaction coordinator. I know fully on like that, my transaction coordinator, she's gonna be following up on all the dates and all the things, I can monitor the emails, and then by 11 o'clock, 11.15, I can jump in there, for anything that needs my attention. And generally, right, you know, if obviously if the, if the house is burning down, then okay, I might have to step away from what I'm doing. But nine times out of 10, some of the things that we say are intense in our business actually can wait a couple hours or an hour or two until you get through your lead generation. Okay, so after this admin time, guess what? I'm like in a perfect world, eat, eat, y'all eat, eat something. Like don't be working all day, stuff in your face, <laughs> like in a car, car look, just car just looks sad, right? You might be driving the classic realtor white BMW or maybe not, but like give yourself some time. Like it's okay to take a moment to eat, to decompress. And honestly, like I give myself like a, t- I'll set a timer and I just kind of give myself not a, a little lunch break where if I want to key, he, he catch up, like I'm, this is maybe when I'm catching up with my husband or my friends or, you know, looking at social media, engaging on social media a little bit, but after that, okay. Now we're to the afternoon. Guess what we get to do in the afternoon? We get to go on appointments. <laughs> Hey, we get to go on appointments. But what if one says, well, I don't have an appointment, Rosemary. I absolutely have nothing to do because I don't have any clients showing. I didn't book a listing appointment. So what is it that I need to do? Well, baby, you can create your own appointments, right? And I'm gonna give you some ideas of things that I think that you could do on a weekly, well, not I think that I'm going to encourage you to incorporate in your schedule on a weekly basis and it can be these type of appointments but of course like if you actually don't have a listing appointment you actually don't have a buyer's wrap or or something like that this might be additional time that you're doing some stuff where you're working on your business right like this may be the time that you are you know doing those flyers on canva or you're reaching out like maybe your lead generation activity looks different right in the morning you were hunting for buyers and sellers and in the afternoon maybe you're looking to connect with agents to see who you can do open houses with or, you know, connecting yourself with different business owners, right? So just continuing some time where you're having different conversations, okay? But then you're open for appointments. And then after that, you know, there should be a time where you are wrapping up for the day. This was really hard for me to wrap my mind around. And some days, I'm be honest, it still is hard for me to wrap my mind around. But it's okay. Like, it's okay if you actually been in the office 
in your home office, in your physical office, you've been having conversations, it's okay to actually shut down at a certain amount of time, right? If you don't have anything in the evening, you don't have to, I mean, if you want to, but you don't have to, in my opinion, go and create something astronomical to do. It's okay to go and be present for your family. It's okay to cook dinner. It's okay to go for a walk, right? It's okay to actually have some downtime. And I promise you, the more that we incorporate this, like let's normalize this a little more, then we will be quicker to avoid burnt out. And then wrap, like, what does the wrap up look like? Like maybe it went after you get home or before, even before you leave the office, there is just a catch up. I always like to know, like, I always like to look, for instance, I'm at the office right now. And before I leave the office, I'm going to look and see, okay, what do I need to do tomorrow? What appointments do I have? Am I prepared? Like tomorrow in my life, I have a team meeting. So I want to be clear on what we're talking about in a team meeting and <laughs> shocker where, you know, August 17th is still a thing around here. It's, it's coming up. So I'm just making sure that my team, we're actually just going to role play how to have conversations with other agents as it relates to compensation so that it's not confrontational, but that we actually just know how to best represent our clients, but stay out of litigation. So like, I'm thinking about that. Like today I'm thinking about tomorrow. So also having some time that we're wrapping up and then go have you some downtime. Okay. Okay. So simple. It's so simple. Sometimes it's, it's weird, but it can be just that simple. So let me, let me just give you a little point. So number one, some quiet time, work out, your children, whatever you need to do. Then your lead generation activities, maybe some admin work. Then you're open for appointments. And one thing I didn't put in there, okay, in the afternoon, because for me, like at my house, I do mornings, my husband does afternoons. So I don't necessarily have to be home when my son is home from school. But obviously, like if you know that you have to shut down your day at a certain amount of time, don't feel bad about that. But just give it all you got from eight to three, right? So whatever you need to do in the afternoon, have some wrap up to your day where you're reviewing your time block, you're looking to see what you need to do tomorrow. And then it's okay to have some downtime, okay? And I I really encourage downtime. I encourage having a night routine so that you can be solid the very next day. Now, before I let you go, let me just tell you a couple things that I think that you should incorporate in your weekly schedules. And this could go in that appointment slot. Number one, some sort of face-to-face meeting with somebody. This could be a past client. This could be a friend. This could be a lunch. This could be a coffee. This could be a walk. Before I came to the office today, I met with a young lady named Stephanie. Stephanie and I met at a networking event and she actually works for a breast cancer foundation. And we talked about, you know, we just, we connected. I shared with her, you know, my experience with my sister and my friend who passed away of breast cancer. She gave me some resources and now she's in my database, right? Like I'm following up with her like, hey, by the way, what's your address? I'm gonna send you a monthly market report, right? So those face-to-face meetings are important and make sure you're the one reaching out. You know how these lenders are calling you for lunch and stuff. Can you call your friend? Like, you know, instead of just being like, oh girl, we really should get together, really get together. It don't have to be on a Saturday morning. It could even be a Zoom meeting, right? Like, hey, let's just catch up. Like, I'm gonna send you a Zoom link. Like, let's just catch up on our lunch breaks and have a conversation. Then something else is some sort of community connections, I think should be on your schedule. So that that could be, you know, going and checking out a local business, making sure that you understand or you are looking to see what's happening with, I'm trying to give an example, new construction. Like, are there new construction things coming in the neighborhood? Maybe there is a new development. There is new commerce coming to your area. Like, what are something that you can do every single week to keep your pulse of what's happening in your community? And da 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 these things can become content, Okay. And this is something that will position yourself as not just a market leader, but a local leader, like, you know, what's happening locally. And then also, you know, my favorite form of lead generation, an active form of lead generation that I think will have such um, be, be such a great way to really, really get in front of buyers, especially as we have all of these changes that are coming up with the NAR settlement is open houses, like having some time on your schedule on a weekly basis where you're doing open houses and it doesn't have to be the weekend. We can talk, we'll have a whole nother conversation about that. Um, But those are some things that I think can be on your weekly schedule. So I hope this was helpful. 
as you just um, think through what structuring your time will look like over the next couple of weeks. Um, like I said, if you want to go really deep into like the art of time blocking and I really break it down um, very, very explicitly in a very easy bite sized course, head on over to rosemarylewis.com forward slash time. But if you just want to download like a, um, a day in the life of a top producer and um, you can actually get a template from me, a free template to just give you an idea as like something you can practice the schedule on. Head on over to rosemarylewis.com forward slash week and you will be able to get that. Okay. All right, besties. I hope this was helpful. Share it with your real life real estate besties. And I can't wait to talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode and you have a real life bestie that you think it would resonate with, Y'all, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that share button because you know what? We are better together. Make sure you share the podcast and I appreciate your reviews. I appreciate you giving me five stars more than you know. I'll talk to you next week.